Before the video starts, I just wanted to say make sure that your phone graphics quality is set to low because you're going to be going for high rounds and they're likely going to take one to two hours long. So you don't want to end up frying your phone from all that heat. Hey, what's going on guys? Stickman here and today I'm going to be showing you the best class, some tips and the overall strategy that I use to get from rounds one to 40 within COD Mobile Zombies. But this also works on higher rounds as well. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head into your loadouts and select the RPD LMG. Now what makes this gun so good is when you put all the attachments on screen, alongside the most important one, the cooling compressor barrel, it allows you to switch to overheated fire mode, which essentially means that you've now got an LMG with infinite ammo that you're never going to have to reload ever again. So this is extremely, extremely good for point building. And sure, you could use a Jack-12 or an Echo shotgun instead of an RPD, especially on higher rounds since they do tend to do more damage than the RPD and really help with taking care of dogs. But here's the thing. On high rounds, our focus isn't actually going to be on killing zombies. It's going to be focused on building up enough points so that we can buy traps to kill zombies a lot quicker. Now, the next gun that you're going to want to pick, and I already know everyone in the comments is just jumping for joy right now, but I agree with you guys. The SKS Marksman Rifle, it's one of the best guns in the game, and it allows you to run really quickly. It's got tons of ammo. It deals really heavy damage to boss zombies, and I didn't even have all the attachments equipped on it. And as you can see, it still did work. So you can probably pick better attachments, but this class was good enough for me. But you can use the crossbow, SVD, or ZRG instead of the SKS if you'd like. Now, in terms of the classes, you're going to want to pick the Poltergeist module since it allows you to become invisible and increases your movement speed, which is great for getting out of corners. But Medic also grants you 50 HP and allows you to regen armor for free, so it's up to you. So for the early rounds, I stayed up in spawn and basically started point building, which is really easy to do because Poltergeist increases pistol damage significantly. Then I started heading downstairs to grab all the cog parts so I could get ready to repair the elevator. I bought the RPD from the ordnance machine right away so I could start point building. And I went back up to the elevator and started repairing it. So after racking up some more points, I started making my way over to the other huts around the map so that I could grab the electrical components to fix Pack-A-Punch. And I've got guides for all of this up on my channel, so if you wanted to ever see anything, they're in cards right now. So after fixing Pack-A-Punch, I Pack-A-Punched my RPD at least once so I could start building points quicker to buy perks. A lot of people have been asking me about how the perk system works in COD Mobile Zombies or where to find perks in general on Shinonuma, so let me clarify that real quick. There are essentially seven perks around the map in Shinonuma, and two of them can be found in the underground bunker. And what's important to note about Shinonuma is, just like the original map, the perks are always in random locations. So as you can see right here, I've spliced together different footage basically showing you where all the perks are. But how it works is, perks are always going to be random every game, and two perks are always going to be in the underground bunker, four perks are always going to be within the huts around the map, and the last perk, which is Quick Revive, is always going to be up in spawn, so just keep that in mind. And you don't really need to get Quick Revive unless you're playing a co-op game, but I just bought it anyways because I had the points. Once you bought all your perks, you're going to want to head over to the Ordnance Machine and start picking up Tier 3 armor so that you can take as many hits as possible, and you're going to want to pick up the SKS. Now, just take a look at this thing. An Inferno tried to walk up to me, dude got absolutely melted with the SKS, like within seconds. So this thing is just great for bosses. Now make sure that throughout the entire game you're upgrading both weapons as many times as possible from the Pack-A-Punch, and you're going to notice that at the start of every round that you're going to have four, six, or maybe even more boss zombies of the same type depending on what round you're on. So just make sure that whenever that happens you focus fire on them with the SKS, and make sure that they're all taken care of before moving on to using your RPD to kill other zombies because boss zombies will never spawn in for the rest of that round again. So you can just continue using your RPD and building up points that way. Now, what's kind of wild is I'm actually camping here and the door behind me is open, but zombies just don't seem to spawn in for some reason. I don't really know why this works, but I basically just sat here, kept on point building, made sure that the gauge on the right that you can see right here wasn't filling up to maximum so that it doesn't overheat. And yeah, I just kept on killing zombies. I mean, you can see right here on the minimap too, zombies are only coming in from the front. They're not coming in from behind. They're not even coming in from the stairway on the right. So I literally just camped this one door and just kept getting headshots, making sure that my RPD never overheated and then ending the round that way. I don't know why this works, but I guess it does. Um, so now you're going to want to go to the Pack-A-Punch, make sure that your guns are fully maxed out with all the new points that you've earned. Make sure that you're always buying armor and you're always buying ammo for the SKS whenever possible. 
Now, depending on what boss zombies actually spawn in for you guys at the start of every round, you can either have a really easy time getting through the round or a really difficult time. Now, in my case, I ended up having a really difficult time because unfortunately, Avogadros kept spawning in on round 17, round 18, round 19, and in case you don't know, Avogadros are super powerful because their projectiles can literally kill you in two to three shots if you're not careful, and that's with armor. The only reason why I wasn't really doing anything about it and just staying still was because it was still a lower round, so thankfully, the SKS is really powerful on round 17, but once you get to the higher rounds, man, I really recommend just running out of that building, start training all the zombies, making sure that you're killing one Avogadro at a time, and never, never, ever, ever stand still when you're fighting an Avogadro, or you will be absolutely annihilated. The only exception to this rule is when you have a dog round along with Avogadros, and Avogadros are the final zombies that you have to kill. Simply go prone and their projectiles won't be able to hit you at all. But don't try this in a normal round when zombies are chasing after you or you're gonna die. So like I said before, make sure you're always buying armor, make sure you're always buying ammo for your SKS, and also pack a punching your guns as many times as possible at the end of every round. Try your best to get them up to max level. Now in case you didn't know, max level in this game for pack a punch is actually level 10, which costs 20,000 points for just that level alone which not only makes Black Ops 4 system look fair in comparison, but it's just ridiculous overall. So just make sure that you're always using your RPD to rack up points. Now, in case you guys didn't know, after your first dog round, you're actually going to start getting dogs mixed in with boss zombies within the dog rounds. So you can have dogs, for example, in Brutuses, or you can have dogs in Inferno zombies, or in my case, unfortunately, you can have dogs in Avogadros, which is possibly the worst combination ever because not only do you have to focus on the Avogadros and the dogs, but the dogs themselves are increasingly abundant. Like, these are the most dogs I've ever seen in any Call of Duty Zombies mode ever. Like, I honestly recommend focusing more fire on the dogs than the Avogadros, because the Avogadros are always going to be the last zombies anyways. So you might as well just take out the dogs first so you don't get swarmed, like right here, like in this case, perfect example. I just started using my active camo to get out of that corner as quickly as possible, and active camo runs out after a limited time, or if you like fire your weapon, you'll be basically taken out of active camo, but it's a great, great, just perfect tool to get out of corners with. And as you can see right here, I'm basically just training around in this swamp area. I think it's probably the best area to train with dogs since you don't really get screwed over as much, but you just have to be careful because there's a lot of water and the water itself can actually slow you down. So just make sure that you're training on areas of the map that aren't like flooded with water. Here's just something I wanted to mention really quickly. Uh, at the end of every five rounds that you complete, Rick Toffin's always gonna ask you if you wanna expel out of the map. Just make sure that you hit decline if you actually wanna keep going for high rounds because I have accidentally accepted it once and that wasn't a good time. All right, so now I'm gonna be getting into my round 25 plus strat and this is a little bit different to my earlier strat and the reason why is because your guns start getting a little bit weaker from this point onwards. So you just wanna make sure that you evaluate your surroundings and see what kind of boss zombies spawned in for you at the start of that round. If you ended up getting Infernos or Brutuses, do not do this with Avogadros. Only if you have Infernos or Brutuses, start making your way over to this hut right over here and making sure that you train a little bit outside so that the boss zombies still stay in that area and don't actually spawn in the hut. And then activate the trap so that you now have an electric trap active that's gonna take care of all the boss zombies that are outside this hut. And the reason why this is so good is because you don't need to waste ammo taking care of them. You don't, have, you don't need to have to worry about anything else. Just literally camp right over here within this house and just take care of the few zombies that come in. And you can easily wipe them all out with the SKS or even the RPD if you wanted to. Just make sure that the trap is taking care of all the boss zombies for you and just waiting for that to finish. And as you can see, once the trap itself is done, run out of there because the zombies are just gonna start making their way over there really, really quickly and just head back to the camping spot.
And now that all the boss zombies are gone, I just sit back over here and relax. But remember, once you start getting into the higher rounds, the RPD won't be nearly as effective anymore, so that's when you're going to start wanting to head over to different houses and activating traps while using the SKS to cover yourself while inside the houses. But yeah, I honestly still don't know why zombies don't spawn in from behind, but you can pretty much just sit in that corner with the RPD and just keep going. So this time I got Brutus's to spawn in, and what I ended up doing was I ran back over to the trap spot, just like I did with the Inferno zombies, trained a little bit on the outside, and then ran in, activated that trap, and camped in the building. And from there I just went back to my camping spot with the RPD and just kept finishing the round. Now I know that a lot of people like to pick up the first two weapons that they set in their loadouts from the ordnance machine at the start of every game, pack a punch those two up to level 10, and call it a day and never use anything else. But COD Mobile actually allows you to pick between five different class slots from the ordnance machines of weapons. So technically, you could have a crossbow in there, you could have a ZRG in there, you could have an SKS, an SVD, or a Jack-12, or even an Echo Shotgun. You could literally have whatever guns you want, as long as they're five different guns. And at any point in time, you could go pick those weapons up. So in our case, by the time we reach round 35, because you've been using the RPD for so long, you're likely going to have 200,000 or more points, which means that you could swap it out if you feel like the RPD is getting really weak for a Jack-12 or for an Echo so you can take out dogs a lot quicker. And once you've swapped it out, you can just go back to pack-a-punching it back to level 10 easily since you've got the points for it. I'm pretty much out of things to say at this point, but I guess if I could give a few more tips, I would just say this. One, make sure you don't kill Infernos while standing right next to them. Pretty common sense. Make sure you run away from Brutuses while they're charging at you. Uh, make sure you're always killing Avogadro zombies and running away as soon as possible because their projectiles could instantly down you if you're not careful. When you start the trap, make sure that the trap itself actually has time to cool down before starting it again. But realistically speaking, once you start a trap, kill all the boss zombies, run back to your camping spot and keep killing zombies. Usually the trap's going to be done by that time because you're killing like 150 zombies in the meantime. and. That's just on, you know, round 25, so imagine on even higher rounds. If you ever feel cornered or trapped, make sure you're always using active camo, and also make sure that you use active camo if you want to buy armor or ammo, and you feel like you don't have time to actually run away from the zombies. But yeah, that was pretty much the strat that I used to get from round 25 all the way up to 40, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Thanks again for all the support on the COD Mobile videos, you guys have been absolutely crushing it, like it's unreal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just wanted to let you guys know that if you had any more suggestions for COD Mobile videos, just be sure to drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to them. I feel like I've pretty much run out of content at this point, but if there's anything more you want to see here, just let me know and I'll be sure to make a video on it. But yeah, thanks a lot guys. Peace out.